I loved season two of Russian Doll. Uh, Natasha, I want to say I already loved the Ruth and Nadia dynamic, and we get to see more of that this season. Can you talk about how would you describe their bond and their trajectory this season? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I guess I was thinking of a lot about, um, obviously, you know, Nadia has his, uh, you know, Nadia and Alan exist in somewhat of a sci-fi uh, high concept uh, sort of existence, uh, being that they've, uh, you know, died and come back to life so many times. But, you know, under that, they're incredibly uh, human characters, hopefully. And uh, Nadia is, uh, you know, hitting 40. And like, you know, most of us sort of dealing with the idea of becoming the caretaker uh, for, you know, the, the parent, obviously uh, Ruth is not her birth mother, but all the same, it's sort of a present reality. She kind of can't really show up for cause she's used to being, you know, the kid in need and uh, how, how sort of oddly convenient that, you know, a wormhole appears just in time to be able to uh, escape and, uh, you know, find a way to sort of uh, spend time. Uh, you know, she she thinks she's dealing with it, and yet she's still sort of uh, circumnavigating the the true showing upness of that sort of human relationship. Uh, but I think for both Nadia and Alan this season, they find that whether they like it or not, whether they're getting on the bus willingly or being dragged kicking and screaming, they will sort of come to face. Uh, you know, some big truths about who they think they are and uh, the nature of uh, free will and acceptance. Definitely. Speaking of Alan, uh, Charlie, last season, mm -hmm. he had to mourn the end of the only romantic relationship he's really known. Uh, yes. Now that some time has passed from that, what is his outlook on love and life this year? I think, I mean, he comes into a place of dating and, and, and experiencing new women in his life. Um, I think without giving any spoilers along the way, he pushes those boundaries as well. Uh, there is a freedom that comes with getting to live, uh, gosh, it's so hard not to say things without saying things, um, to live through other skin, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, that he kind of takes advantage of in a lot of ways, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, like life always presents itself that those, those, those things usually come, come crumbling down in order to, to expose a better you. Um, yeah, I, I, I think you get to, uh, you get to see Alan come in from a happy place and end up, um, a little more, a little more in front of his own self, maybe a little more rooted in his own, existence and i think that goes for both of them both mm -hmm. of them in a in a weird way they they are e experiencing so many things connected and this this i guess this in, intrinsical experience of living and dying and finding out that you're the only two people that are experiencing at the same time really connected them so deeply that they are in almost different worlds throughout the whole season um there are there's this beautiful relationship that nadia gets to explore with ruth and and i as well with my own my, my, another one of my members of my family, <laughs> spoilers. Uh, <laughs> we will, um, we will hold it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but we are still, you know, as much as we get to like kind of check back in and find this like safety net on the train. Um, we are, we are almost still tied, tied. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what so the beauty of the show. And what I really think a lot of audience members take from it you don't have to relate to these people. I don't have to understand Alan. I don't have to be like Alan. I don't have to be like Nadia, but I know what they're experiencing. And I take that and I, I know what it's like to be in that place. I relate. Absolutely. I, I relate. I relate to both of them despite not being either of them, but thank you <laughs> so much. I really loved this season and I cannot wait for everyone to watch it. Thank, thank you. you so much. Have a great day.